Hi, I'm Gail Bell and I'm your instructor for this online course. I wanted to take a, a little bit of time and give you a brief overview of the course requirements, ex expectations, and also how to navigate um, this semester successfully. So um, first we want to begin with reading the syllabus. Okay, there are two places in your course that you can find the syllabus and I'll show you those uh, a little bit later in this orientation. But um, be sure and read all of it. I'm going to highlight some specific information. It's almost like a contract between the two of us where I'm explaining to you the course requirements, what we're going to cover, um, and how we'll proceed. And, and you're expected to know the policies. Okay. I realize it's a lot of information. And for those of you taking more than one course, um, it's easy to get all of this confused. So I, that's the reason I wanted to take a little bit of time and highlight some important information. Okay, the first thing, if you'll notice here on the syllabus that I have um, highlighted, and this is just a generic syllabus for another course. I don't even think it's an online course, but all of them look pretty much the same. Now, a lot of the information, by the way, that I go through in this Blackboard orientation, um, it may not look exactly like your course does. For example, the home page in Blackboard may be different, um, but the key elements will be there and they'll be similar. And so um, just be aware of that. Okay, um, so first, uh, if we were in a face-to-face -face class, the first thing that I would highlight, to, I would do is ask you to take out, uh, after I distributed the syllabus, I'd ask you to take out a highlighter or a pen or something so that you can actually have some of this information stand out to you. First, I'd ask you to highlight the phone number. Um, this is direct dial to my office and I do have voicemail, so should you need to reach me, um, please feel free to call me. Now, um, my preferred method of communication is email for several reasons, and we'll talk about that uh, in a second. But should you have some emergency or if you have sort of an in-depth question that would be hard for us to answer back and forth through email, uh, please feel free to call. Now, when to call um, is covered next, the office hours, which I've highlighted here. My office hours change every semester just based on my course schedules. Um, my particular schedule and so um, these are the hours that will indicate when I'm pretty much guaranteed to be in my office unless I have a meeting or there's something else going on. Um, now it doesn't mean I won't be there other times but these are my the hours in which I'm available to meet with students so you can certainly reach me during this um, during these hours. Once again feel free to call some you know later in the day or, or some other time. We are supposed to work and uh, for those of us who are full-time faculty from 7.45 in the morning until 4.15 in the afternoon um, with of course a break for lunch and then we have our, our classes. Um, if we have a night class, of course, we're here later than that. Um, so once again, it doesn't mean I'm not here later. Uh, textbook. Uh, the English department at GNTC has migrated to all open educational resources, which means, means that they're all online instead of having a, a physical textbook, and they're free to our students. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit more about that later, but the textbook uh, is, is right here on the screen. Okay. Now, please read the rest of this information. I'm not saying it's not important, um, but this is uh, established at the state level. It talks about the particular um, objectives and competencies, the goals for the class, and what we're supposed to cover in order to receive credit for this to be an accredited course. So read that information. But the second, the next thing that I've highlighted is attendance and late work policies. Okay, and um, the attendance and late work policies. Here you go. The attendance and late work policy um, are, are particularly important because you need to know how um, I handle um, late assignments. And uh, in an online course, one of the benefits of an online course is it does give you the flexibility to work on, uh, to do work at your at your speed. But that doesn't mean that they're not due dates. And I, I realize that there's some instructors who will open an entire course for an, for the semester and let you, you know, and then you can just work at your own pace. What I find, having been an educator for more than 35 years, is that most students need structure. Um, most of us are procrastinators and we don't thrive necessarily well if uh, if we're allowed to wait to the last minute to do something. So my course has specific date, due dates, usually weekly. 
Okay, but when you work on that information, when you when you accomplish those tasks are totally up to you. That's part of the flexibility. Also, please be aware, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but were you in a face-to-face -face class taking the same course on campus, you would have two and a half hours a week that we meet face-to-face, -face, okay? So that's two days a week for an hour and 15 minutes each. And then you, in addition, you would have homework. So you need to expect to put in at least that amount of time in an online course. Online courses are not easier necessarily. They require that you be more organized and that you be stay on top of, of, of tasks. Okay. Um, the next information that you should be sure to look for at, are the resources, if there are any additional resources that are required. Um, all of the documents that you submit for me, so for example, when you write a paper, unless you can actually type it into Blackboard itself, um, need to be created using Microsoft Word. And that is available free to you if you don't already have it on your computer um, under my GNTC. Okay, as long as you're a, my, uh, a GNTC student, you have free access to Microsoft Office products. Um, I can't open, for example, Google Docs. I know a lot of students. Um, especially high school students you are familiar and are required to use Google Docs, but I can't open those. Um, so um, those of you who have um, Apple products, I can't open a WP, I think they're WPG file or WPS file. I, I don't have that capability. So you need to use Microsoft Word. Okay, so that's part of what will be covered under resources and materials. And then finally under evaluation, it, um, this section of the syllabus will explain to you uh, what, what we will cover this semester, what the specific assignments will be, and how they're weighted. I use a running point total, which means instead of having tests be 30% of your grade and papers 30%. Um, what I do instead is I assign point totals. So for example, papers and tests are 100 points usually. Um, smaller assignments are anywhere between 10 and 50 points. And um, the reason I do it this way is because it kind of has the importance built into the point totals. So um, they're based on however how much brain power, time, effort uh, it's going to take you to accomplish the task. Okay. So that's, uh, this will explain my grade policy. Also be sure to read any important notes that I include. Finally, the student schedule, uh, which is the last page of your syllabus, is just what I think we're covering and when I think we're covering it. But it's open to, um, it's certainly open to revision. So don't go by that necessarily to, um, to um, understand what assignments are due. The best way to do that is to stay current with Blackboard and to look in uh, at the calendar, which I'll show you in a minute. All right, my best tips for succeeding in an online course, especially if you've never taken one before. Um, my courses open, I mean, my assignments open week to week. So, for example, I'll organize them under lessons by week one, week two, week three. They usually open on a Tuesday, all right, except for the first week of class or any holidays. And then they will close that following Monday night. All right. What I recommend that students do is on sometime on Tuesday, um, open the next week's assignment. Once they become available, open the week's assignment so that you can plan. You can see what's uh, what's what is, is expected of you that week, and you can plan accordingly. Um, I suggest you keep a calendar, although I do keep one as well for you for uh, assignments in Blackboard, and feel free to use that. Um, but that way, you'll know when specific um, assignments are due, especially written assignments. Okay. Um, you're expected to log into this course at least twice a week. What I find are the students who wait until the day things are due, which is usually are usually Monday, that is usually Monday, uh, and try to do all of the work on that day are not that successful, and they certainly don't do their best work. Um, so I recommend trying to set aside twice a week, if not more, to, to do your assignments, and I think you'll find that that's going to work well for you. All right. So important. This is the key, honestly, to effective um, having an effective semester. Communicate, communicate, communicate with me. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know. If you have problems, please let me know. Um, comments, please let me know. Um, I will be happy if you fall behind, let me know. I can work with any student and sort of extend due dates if necessary if I know in advance. What I can't do, unless it's a verifiable emergency, is change due dates for you on the, on the day that things are due. Please realize that. That's too late. 
Okay, so um, just keep in touch with me. And again, my preferred method is via email. Um, now I'm going to ask you to use, instead of the MyGNTC email to email me, I'm going to ask you to use Blackboard's email function, which again I'll show you in a second where it's located. Um, because Blackboard automatically will then identify to which course um, you belong. Um, every semester I teach somewhere between 100 and 150 students. And a lot of those students are online, and, and until I realize which course you are taking from me, because I do offer four, um, I'm not going to automatically know unless you identify yourself. I am your student in your online English 1101 course. I'm not going to automatically know where you belong, and so that slows me down, and that makes communication more frustrating. So if you email me through Blackboard, it automatically identifies your course. Okay. Once again, I prefer email because it keeps a record um, between the two of us of our communication so that we can both look back and see what was said. Um, but should you need to call me, don't hesitate to do so. Now, if you have technical problems with Blackboard, fine to contact me about that. But also, please contact the help desk um, in, in Blackboard, uh, especially if you're having trouble loading something or, you know, if, if you get some type of error message. Um, once again, contact me as well. Um, it may be something I know how to fix, but for a lot of technical problems, I don't. Um, by the way, be aware that if, if you do the Blackboard orientation um, that's just sort of generic, um, it will tell you that the preferred browsers to use for um, that are supportive um, for Blackboard are, um, are um, <laughs> sorry, Google Chrome and Firefox. Microsoft Edge and Microsoft, um, let's see, the older version of Internet Explorer are not, um, are not supported. Okay, so that may be part of the problem. The last thing I want to cover is um, the Blackboard setup. This is our home page. Once again, it may look different, but here are the most, or look differently. But um, these are the main things that I want you to be sure to, to um, familiarize yourself with. The Lessons tab is where all of the action is. That's where you will find all of your assignments. The Announcements tab, um, I will post information there. This is where you can follow your grades, right, under My Grades. Um, the textbooks will be located right here normally unless I put them in the lessons themselves, okay, so you can access them there. You can send me email. Once again, this is the preferred method. Um, here under this tab, send email. Um, I'll keep a running calendar of due dates. A copy of the syllabus will be located here, and um, Blackboard collaborate more on that later, but that allows us to have live lectures, uh, which we will have two of this semester usually uh, per class. And then finally, NetTutor is a tutoring service that's available to you free of charge. You can upload papers, you can ask questions. Please, please, please don't hesitate to use NetTutor. It's a service that um, we provide for our online students and for our face-to-face -face students. Um, and, and we pay for that service, and there are qualified people, not only for English or literature, but also for psychology, for math, so you can get help online. Um, so finally, if your homepage looks something like this, um, normally all of this information will be on the left-hand corner. These are all of your tabs um, to access uh, portions of the site. This uh, part may be different of the home page, but usually the announcements will be here um, and there will be a little what to do um, section as well. Um, but access all of the main information through the lessons tab, okay? Um, I'll have a folder, another place where you can access your syllabus as well as here on the, on the left hand side. And then uh, all you have to do to open something is to select it, okay? So for week one, select the head heading, uh, you'll notice there's no content to display here, but um, the way that you move through your courses um, is to actually select um, titles, all right? Anything that's a title, if you click it, it will open. Um, be sure and always read all of the information before you begin an assignment. Look at the due date, um, the points due, and so forth, and uh, follow the instructions. Okay, the final thing um, that I do want to show you really quickly is NetTutor. When you select and launch NetTutor, um, once, you, once you sign on the agreement here, wherever that is, because I can't find it, um, well, 
I don't know how to get past that. Anyway, it gives you the option of uploading a paper, of leaving a question, of actually even entering a chat room with the tutor where you can um, conduct uh, you know, a live chat and get your an uh, questions answered. So please do not hesitate to, to um, contact me. I hope we have a great semester.